Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game repair video for you this evening. Would you look at this? We are going to attempt to fix the Mighty Tempest. Yeah, that's right, the Mighty Tempest. Super duper classic Atari game from the early 80s with a freaking color vector monitor in it. What do you think about that? This belongs to our buddy Adam down at the beach. Player's Choice Video Games in the Myrtle Beach Mall. If you ever get a chance, go in there and check him out. He's got all kinds of arcade games and stuff. He's got some cool stuff. But anyway, every once in a while he brings us a couple games to work on because he knows that we're going to give him the super duper treatment. I'm using my adjectives today. Um, so we're going to go all through this thing and make sure everything's cool. I believe it's just the monitor. Um, he also brought us the Star Wars that we were working on. Uh... And it had the same monitor and the same issues, you know. So I think it's just the monitor. So we're going to uh, we're going to see if we can fix it. What do you think about that? But you know how I do. I don't want to just do the monitor. I mean, I want to look and make sure that everything's cool. So I have taken the back door off. By the way, this is just sitting there. That goes behind the glass. The glass came out. I didn't do that. That's just how it was. I have taken the back door off, that's it over there. And this is what we're starting with inside. Now don't get scared. That's not broke. It's just hanging like that. The deflection board I have in the back, it's been removed. Okay, so it's got a Wells Garner 6100 color vector monitor in it. It's got a uh, original Atari board, original Atari power supply, and original Atari power suitcase down in the bottom. So we're going to uh, see what's the deal, Lucille. On our last one, on the one that we did for the uh, Star Wars, there was an issue with some of these chassis mounted transistors. So that's probably what's going to be going on on this as well. This one also has a new flyback, just like the other one did. So we got that Star Wars up and running. Maybe we can get this one up and running. Um, but just like before, I'm going to go through and check all the power and make sure all that's cool. I'm sure Adam wouldn't want it any other way. So we're going to make sure that everything's good down in the bottom. Um, and uh, before we before we plug it in. Whenever, whenever somebody brings us one that's been bouncing around, we like looking at it first and making sure nothing's uh, screwed up inside. Stuff like this. Now this is, they did this on purpose. There's nothing wrong with this, but... Sometimes uh, something like this will happen in transport. The, the neck board will bounce off or something, and you don't really want to turn it on like that. So you always take the back door off and see what's going on inside of it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out all of the stuff that uh, is down in there. And uh, see what all, all goodies I can find inside of it. And then we're going to run through and check the power and then the power here, and then the power up to the board, and then we'll see if we can get the thing to start. It's got a big dent on the top, too. Adam, I didn't do that. Now, before you get too mad about it, Adam, it's on the back. Now, you, you remember that this was like this when, when you brought it to it. <laughs> the front looks pretty good. And he's got it on wheels because it breaks so much that he wants it easy to roll around so he can easily roll it into the back room. But we're going to get it a little more reliable, hopefully. And then we're going to play it. What do you think about that? All right, so let me pull all the stuff out of the bottom of it first. Okay, folks, so this is what was, what was in it. This is the back door sheet. So it was originally stapled to the back door, and it tells you how to do a lot of the settings and stuff like that. So it's still in there. Uh, there was a little piece of wood that fell off of the back door, apparently. Some kind of little clamp. A tag for the... Uh, wiring harness, a few screws, and a light bulb for the coin door. And that's it. So uh, let me show you the wiring harness. There's a, there's a couple wires that are screwed up. So here's the wiring harness. So it looks like somebody has repinned most of the wires. See how they're pulled out a little bit? That's fine. No big deal. But there's a couple that are broke, like that one. 
And then also, well, there's a couple wires here that are disconnected, but still plugged in. So I think they must have figured out that they don't need those. <laughs> but what we're going to do is figure out what the hell they went to. It looks like they were on the harness, though, that goes up to the monitor. So there must be some reason that they decided that they do not need those. So we'll look all that up and figure that out. Make sure we get this thing, uh, you know, official. And then also, it's still got the original big blue, although it's a big green. So that in a power in a Atari game, they have this little power brick in the bottom that uh, has the transformer on it and basically um, creates the initial voltages, the unregulated voltages. And they use a big capacitor on the 10.6 volt um, DC supply. Then the 10.6 volt DC supply comes up to this board, and this board turns it into 5 volts, like we want. And then the 5 volts runs over to the main board and runs all of the IC chips. Okay? So I have unplugged the main board because this board is worth about $250 just by itself. And so if there's something wrong with the power supply, I don't want it sending like too much voltage than frying this board because I, I can probably fix it, but it's valuable. No need to blow up crap we don't need to blow up. Now, all this probably works fine. As I understand it, the monitor's just messed up. But we're going to check just to make sure. You know, we're going to work through it because, in my opinion, that's the best way to get them reliable. So we're going to start right here. We're going to start at the plug going into the game. Right? So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, write down all of the voltages that are supposed to come off of this um, power brick. And then you can check them over here at this plug. So you can unplug this. This is all the outputs. You can unplug that and then using these little pins here can check the voltages down in the plugs. Now you see, if you look close, there's some tape and stuff on this. I'll look at that too just to figure out what's going on there. It looks like they're just trying to... They may have pulled a little insulation back so they can see the voltage. Or it may just be a marking. I've got tape on it just to tell you something or the other. Or maybe not. Let's see. Let's see if I can pull it off with one hand while y'all are watching. Um... Oh, it's cracked a little bit. Okay. So the insulation is just slightly cracked there. So you know the right way to fix that? Put a little electrical tape on it. It'll be fine. <laughs> so um, I'll grab some electrical tape. And then I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to write down what the voltages is, are supposed to be out of that coming out of this plug here. And then we'll check it with this unplugged. The power goes in here right out of the wall. And then it comes out of there through this plug to a couple switches. One here and one right here. This is called a safety switch. So it was originally, somebody has turned it around, which is fine, but originally it was pointing backwards so that if the door comes off, like so let's say a kid gets behind it and somehow knocks the door off the game or something, whenever that happens, the switch ends up like that. And so, uh, again, originally it was mounted like this, right? So with the door on, it holds the switch in. So that's on. If the door comes off, it pops out. And they call it the service switch, too, because if you're going to work on it, you can pull the switch out and it stays. These are on, like, almost every arcade game. And some pinball machines. So if you... Uh, if you get one, that's a good thing to know. <laughs> See the screw hole there where it was spun around? They just spun it like that and did that. So why do they do that? Because it gets so annoying every time you take the door off having to mess with that. And a lot of people don't realize that you can just pull it up. Also, if your back door is loose, like it's not holding on good, instead of holding the switch in, it'll let it come up a little bit. And it same thing, it cuts the game off. And that's a straight up switch. It will completely kill the game. So that switch and this switch plug in here. So the power comes in, goes through the switches, and then I think it goes through a, f a fuse or two, 
and then some of the 120 is split out here which runs the marquee up at the top so that goes all the way up to the top up there and makes the light work on the front which runs off 120 and then uh, this little thing here is a voltage jumper so see how these are yellow if you plug that in it makes the transformer accept 120 volts on the line if this was in another country you might use a different plug here a brown one or a white one and it basically it just puts jumpers in different places that's jumpering the inputs to the transformer to make it run on different voltages so I think in Japan it runs on uh, 90 volts or 100 volts and uh, a different jumper would tell that hey you know this should be running on 90 volts or whatever and then on in some places I think it runs on uh, 220 or whatever it doesn't really matter but but uh, that little jumper plug makes these universal where they can use them in any game. Okay. And then, uh, so it goes through a fuse or two. I guess this is the main fuse. It goes to the transformer. The transformer creates its voltages that it wants and runs through fuses again. And then there, one of the voltages goes to a bridge rectifier that's underneath, gets rectified in, into DC voltage, and then it and this cap create a 10.6 volt situation. Look, I've already cut myself. Now, how did that happen? You've been here with me the whole time. How in the world did I do that? What did I touch? What did I, what have I done here? <laughs> I'm bleeding. I'm leaking. Um, so anyway, so that's, here's where it all starts. So we're going to check it first, and then I'm going to show you how to check that, uh, that big blue, which is really a big green. They're usually blue. That's why people call them the big blue. I'm going to show you how to check that big old capacitor there um, once we get back up to this board. So, uh, and again, I've got the main board unplugged and the monitor is also unplugged because it's in pieces right now. So we're going to check those voltages first. Let me go write down what they're supposed to be out of the schematics. Okay, so I've pulled up the schematics online. They're out there, folks. Um, and, you know, like we always say, the, the just follow the stuff in from where it comes in the wall until you figure out where something's not working right. And then you know what you need to work on, right? So here is the power plug. Comes in. This is where it plugs into the side of the uh, uh, power brick in the bottom. I was talking about the transformer panel. That's that plug right there. And then it goes to a line filter. Then it goes through a fuse. Then it comes to here. This is the uh, switches. To one off and interlock switches. So if they're both on, the power keeps coming. And then it runs up to here to the yellow wires, which are for 120. And so then there's also some violet ones for 100, and some gray ones for 200, and some blue ones for 220. So depending on which one of those is in it, does different jumpers, sends power over to this transformer makes it do its thing and then some of the stuff comes back out to plug them to the light up at the top right and some of it runs through the transformer over to here where there are different fuses we need to check all the values of those fuses too if you have one of those that's over fused where say somebody it blows the 4 amp fuse and they put a 10 amp in it it'll work like that but the next time it needs to blow the fuse, instead of blowing the fuse, it'll burn up the wires, catch crap on fire. Got to be careful. So you got to make sure all those are right. Uh, and so most of them come over here to create different voltages. And then the one set right here goes to a bridge rectifier. And then that is your big blue, 27,000 UF. 27,000 UF at 15 volts DC. Um, that creates 10.6 volts DC. So I've written all of that down here. So there is one, two, three. There's only four voltages to check on that bottom thing. So we're going to go check it and see if they are doing their thing. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how to check the big blue. Okay, folks. So we're going to test them. We're going to attempt it. 
Now, I don't want to hear any more crap about how dirty my fluke meter is. All you people that wash off your meters, I don't know what the hell kind of technician you are, but mine's dirty. Deal with it. Okay. So, we're going to skip the DC one because we're going to go back to that. Uh, six and seven are 36 volt, and it always says center tap, but I could never find the center tap. On these schematics, it does show that there is a center tap on this part of the transformer that runs up to ground. Oh, and you might you might be wondering, why don't I have the actual schematics here? It's because usually they're not in the machine, and so there's copies of them online, but they're, they're an awkward size. Usually they're really big, so you can't really print them out. You can print out like a, a screenshot of that part of the schematic, and I like to draw on them and write on them and scribble and all that crap, and to me it makes sense, so I, I just prefer to write them on a notepad. All of you people in the UK are always uh, very uh, entertained by the name of the company that gives me these pads. This is our buddies down the street in Gastonia. They do printing and stuff. That's their last name. Okay. So, 6 and 7, 36 volt center tap, AC. So, I'm going to put it on AC. And then, I'm going to try to put the two leads in the hole for 6 and 7. If I can remember what that is. Oh, and why did I unplug the plug? Well, just because it's a little easier to just stick the probes in the holes. And since they're all outputs, you don't need it to be plugged in. Plus, you're isolating everything in the cabinet from it. So that way you know if it's, you know, for sure that it's the actual power supply because nothing's plugged in. So it's at 38.5. So why is it a little bit high? It's because it's unregulated. Let me show you something else here. Yeah. If I can get it to work. It's an unregulated voltage, and we're in Rock Hill, South Carolina, where the voltage is 123.6 coming out of the wall. Thank you, uh, Rock Hill uh, Power Company. So we, we got nice, strong power around here. Yeah, that's right. I'm bragging about our power. <laughs> Deal with it. Let's see here. AC. So that's good. Okay, so now we'll check the 6.7, which is kind of useless because all it does is make the coin door lights work. But it's on pins 8 and 9. Six point seven. Dead on the money. Boy, those coin bulbs are going to be perfect. And then 10, 11, and 12. No, 10, 11, and 13. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see it. So 10 is one side of the power rail. 11 is the center tap part. And 13 is the other side. 51.9. Perfect. That's the voltage that runs the um, monitor, too, by the way, which I think is our, our problem. Okay, so let's go back up to this one here, which is different because it's DC instead of AC. So we're going to go to pins 4 and 5 are ground, and 1, 2, and 3 are all 10.6. We're going to go to pin four. And pin three. Again, unregulated. 15.4 DC. So that's not really crazy for it to be that high. Okay, so here's how we're going to check the big blue. The way this thing is wired up, if you, if you saw in the schematics, all of these ground lines are attached to one side of the capacitor and all of these are attached to the other side of the capacitor. So there's a, there's a, uh, I might get this wrong, I think it's like that. Is it something like that? There's a capacitor across these two, right? And so if you uh, leave your probes on, on these two and then check AC, you don't want it to have a ton of AC voltage getting through. You want it to have 0.3 uh, volts or less, pretty much. 
We're getting nothing. Somebody was telling me though, isn't that because there's no load? If there's no load, it'll do that. I tried this before on a football game. So we'll, we'll plug in the uh, we'll plug in the power supply and then check it again. What do you think about that? So that's the uh, that's the the bottom uh, transformer panel. So next up, we're going to plug in the power board, which uh, which uh, rectifies all of that and regulates all that. And uh, we'll check the voltages there too, leaving the monitor unplugged still and leaving the game board unplugged still. Okay, folks. So I don't have my meter anything plugged in right now. But we are going to, we're going to check that same exact thing we were just checking. We're going to check the 10 volt and the ground lug, which I actually have on the... Uh, so I have plugged in the, the uh, rectifier board. And I'm going to check those two lugs while we're at it. So let's see. We're still doing AC on the DC lugs. 0 0.05, and that's with the regulator board hooked up. They're using that uh, voltage to make 5 volts. So, there is some AC ripple, but it's 5 hundredths of a volt. Do I have that right? 5 hundredths. I think that's right. So it's low. If it's 0.3 or so, you probably need to replace it. Or, you know, if it's your game, you might want to replace it anyway. But guess what? I'm not going to replace it because I don't think it's bad. Now, you see how it went up to 0 .08 after I unplugged? Like, we're not even plugged in and we're getting that. So, But anyway, let's see if we can check some of these other voltages. So some of these, if you watched whenever we did the Star Wars one, some of these voltages weren't actually on the power supply. So I don't know... I'm looking carefully. Very, very carefully. There are different versions of the power supply. So the schematics show a certain little setup. Let me put this back on ground. Yeah, a lot of this stuff isn't actually... I don't think it's populated. Let me see if I can figure out which connector is which. Let me get my flashlight. <laughs> it's inside the game. I can't see it. Okay, I got my flashlight. I'm back, folks. All right, so we're going to try to test these voltages here. I don't think some of them are even there. And we'll know because the, there won't be a wire in the actual harness. So let's do the 5 volt one first. I have found J7. Let not your heart be uh, troubled. Okay. Holy crap. We're having issues, people. But we're going to get there. Alright. Pin 4 is the ground. Pin 6 is a 5. Let's see what this does. How about a little bit of that? Okay, so it's at 4.9. That's a little low with no load. You know, the, the actual game board isn't plugged in. So maybe we should turn that up slightly. Um, yeah, let me get a screwdriver. Be right back. So I like having it a little bit over 5 on the actual board. And I mean, we're starting at 4.99. You lose a little bit of voltage in the wiring and stuff in the connectors. That's the wrong way. So with nothing plugged in, we're at 5.1. Who knows what it'll be on the board once we get ready, but okay, so our five is there. Okay, now J10. I believe this is big bad one over here. Yes, that's J10. Okay, so I've got one, two, and three. Five, six. And 11 and 12. One, two, three. Four's not there. Five, six. <laughs> I 
<laughs> 11 and 12. So all this board is doing is it's turning the 36 volts up here into 22 and negative 22. Hmm. Well, what do you know about that? Like I said, in the schematics it showed the other voltages, but apparently that's not how they did it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. There is five. Now let's see what pin one gives us. Huh? What do you think about that? 26. There is no adjustment on this, so apparently those are still not regulated. <laughs> so uh, 22 is 26. Negative 22 is negative 26, and that's it. 5, 8, 11, and 12 are all grounds, and they're in there, but all these, uh, the, it's not making a 12 volt, it's not making a 5, a positive 15, or a negative 15, but the actual game board may be. So I'll show you what I'm talking about with the various versions. Okay, so this is it in the cabinet, and it's turned on right now, but do you see how there's a bunch of stuff over here that's not populated? So if it was a different version, there'd be more stuff going on over there to make, you know, some of that stuff happen. Uh, there's a transistor or some kind of voltage regulator that goes down here that's not installed either. So there's just different versions. Some of them make different things. So in the schematics, it mentioned all that stuff, but it's just, uh, I, I guess they've copied and pasted just schematics that they have of what the super duper power supply does. And this is just the smaller one that, you know, um, doesn't do all of those voltages and it's not you can swap these out too and put the wrong one in a machine but that's not what's going on here because the actual harness is missing the wires so it's 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 the right one you can tell which one is which too again this is turned on right now see this number it's upside down but it says dash zero four so I'm going to very slowly, so you don't get sick, turn you upside down so you can see it better. <laughs> uh, I'm trying not to get electro killed. All right, all right, all right. Do -de -do 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 -de -do 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 -de -do -do Dash zero four. Uh, so that's how you tell which revision you've got. There's a dash zero one, a dash zero. I don't know all the ones, but the one in this one is a zero four. I'm sure that would line up with whatever it says in the schematics. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, it looks like everything's cool. So we are now cool that we can plug in the game board, but I want to figure out what these wires are before I do that. So I'm going to check these two and this one that's broke, maybe a sense wire, and I'm going to see if there's some other ones broke. You see how. This shouldn't really be pulled out like that, but I think somebody has went through and replaced all of these pins, which is a good thing to do. They're kind of hard to find, though. And you can see what happens. See that one right there, how it's bent in? It's not sticking out as far as the other ones. The one right in the middle of the screen that's by itself. See how it doesn't stick out like the other ones do? It's a little bent. And that is whatever that little purple wire is. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna write down the ones that are uh, popped loose or the two that are cut, and then we're gonna look in the manual and see what those go to, just to make sure that we don't need them. So here are the schematics again, and this is the edge connector on the PCB. Now, you saw how those wires look. They kinda look bad, but after pulling on them and looking at them and all of that, there's only three of them that are actually a problem. There's the brown and the white one were disconnected, and the red and the blue one at the end was broken. So um, the other ones, the, the reason you can see the wires is because whenever they crimped the new connectors on, 
the new uh, uh, pins on the connect the the wire, they didn't crimp it on the insulation. So usually you have two little places that it crimps. I'll show you in a minute. One should crimp around the wires and one should crimp around the insulation. They probably didn't have the right tools or something or whatever. So they didn't they didn't get it crimped on the insulation, which means it's not as strong. You could if you pull on that wire, it's a little easier to break the wires since the, the insulation is not holding it. Um, but if they're they did it pretty good where they didn't leave any of them long enough to touch any of the other ones, it's not the best way to do it, but it'll work. Um, so those three wires, okay, one of them is right at the end, and it's this negative sense line right here that's red and blue, and we're going to talk about the sense circuit here in a minute. So that one is disconnected. I'm gonna re I'm gonna put a new pin on that and replace it. And then the brown and the white ones are these two right here. See them? B N and W. Look how they're just jumpers. So it's this weird thing on a Tempest. I don't know why it's like this, but see how, see how it says output three, output four, and then it turns around and goes back in, and it says X inverted, Y inverted. I don't understand quite what that is, but they've got it disconnected. So I would assume that it was working like it is but basically they've cut those wires so usually it sends the signal out and then invert and then back into the board which then makes it invert somehow and then I guess go out another another uh, output um, here X out and Y out so I don't know why they did that why they cut them I've, I've looked on the front I took the uh, the glass off the front and looked and the, the tube is in there correctly so the tube is not upside down you can tell from the burn in um, I'll show you that here in a second. So if we put the game, if we get the game up and running and it's it's upside down on the screen, we'll connect those two wires back and that'll probably fix it. But for whatever reason, they're cut loose and it's kind of zip tied in the harness like that. So I would assume they've got the some of the wires swapped somewhere so that it fixes it another way. But uh, let me show you the burn in on the tube so I can show you that it's apparently been working fine with the monitor mounted in there as it is. So this is how it looks with the tinted glass on it. You don't see any burn in. It's a little dirty, but you don't see any burn in. And with the vividness of the screen, you wouldn't see any burn in either. But let me take the tinted uh, plexi off and I'll show you. So that's how the tube looks with the plexi off. You can see the images and it's not upside down. It's in there the correct way. So we're going to run with that. Now, uh, whenever we talk about the monitor, we will talk about the spot killer there is your spot do you see the area right in the center of the screen there's three or four of them there where it's actually burnt see the black that is the the phosphorus is completely burnt off the back of the tube right there see it right in the middle so that's why you need your spot killer I'll, we'll talk about that whenever we mess with the monitor but uh, basically if the board if the monitor loses deflection so, so a, a, a vector monitor draws everything on the screen, and so it might say draw a line from here to here, and then draw another one from here to here, and another one from here to here. And it, it gives coordinates, and it tells the beam where to go and what to do, right? Well, if, that's called deflection. And so if it loses deflection, the ability to move the beam with the yoke, if it, if it loses the ability to move it, the beam just stays in one place the whole time. And it's a really intense light. On a vector monitor, it's when we were doing the Star Wars, I was trying to illustrate this. You can't even really film it very good. I'm sure if somebody had just the right camera, they could. I'm just using a little point and click, you know, point and shoot. If somebody had just the right camera, I'm sure they could film a vector and make it look pretty good. But the the there's nothing quite like playing one because they get real bright and it just it just looks like nothing. You can't really make a, t a, a TV or an LCD screen look like it. But um which is the draw kind of the, of these games. Um, but uh, that beam is really bright, and if it's not moving around, it will burn the hell out of the tube. So it has actually burnt a hole in the phosphor in the back of the uh, CRT in two or three places because it moved a little bit. So it did this one at one point, and then at another point things were adjusted slightly different, and it did that one. <laughs> so it's... Probably got three different times here that the the uh, deflection board has been screwed up and it's been burning a hole in the middle of the damn screen. I don't know how long it takes to do that, but there you go. So let me grab a uh, one of those pins and we'll we'll fix that little uh, 
connector and I'll show you uh, how it's supposed to go on there. Okay, here's the connector that broke off. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but let me put it on something. Maybe you can. Let me put it on this box here. What do y'all know about a Aura Interactor virtual reality game where still in the box? You guys get in touch with me if you need that. Okay, so as you can see here, so what, what they've done is they've crimped just on the, the, the 10 wires. They haven't crimped on the actual insulation. And there are actually two sets of crimps on these, on these things. So there is this crimp, which is supposed to go on the wire, but this one is supposed to go on the insulation. And so if you do that, it makes it a stronger connection because the insulation is harder to tear apart than just the bare wires. And so they've done that on all of them. They've crimped on just the wires and the insulation is back behind it. So I put this one on. And same thing. I don't know if it'll focus. There we go. Look at that. Have you ever seen a more focused picture? I'm so proud of myself. Okay. So uh, see how the one crimp is on the wire and the other crimp is back on the insulation? That's mucho fuerte. <laughs> forte mucho forte it makes it real strong so it's like a strain relief you know so none of these have that now am I going to go through and replace every one of those hell no I'm not going to go through and replace every one of those I might replace a couple if they figure out they're broke or something but the, 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 really the only problem is is if they would touch another wire that would be bad or if they break but if they're in the harness I mean they shouldn't break but whenever you pull it off and on and stuff that will break it. Also, these these pins are Molex pins that are discontinued. You can't even get them anymore. So, they're killing us here. So, I have gotten these, which are not quite exactly the same, but these are made by Twisted Quarter. If you don't know Twisted Quarter, they are an arcade part supplier. We buy all kinds of stuff from them. They basically sell joysticks and things, and they even sell these little pins. <laughs> They're not quite the right ones, though, but I, we're going to get it to fit down in that harness and run with it. Um, and then, uh, so after that, our sense wire will be connected back. But we're going to do the dreaded sense mod. And I'll show you why. So I'm going to put that back in, and I'll pull out this power supply. And then we'll talk about the sense mod and why uh, some people's is for it and some people's is against it. Okay, so this is the uh, AR2 board out of... The Tempest, okay. Uh, regulator Audio 2, but they call it the AR2. I don't know why they don't call it the RA2. Never have figured that out, <laughs> but that's what it is. And like we were showing earlier, it's Revision 4, okay. These are in almost every old school Atari game: Centipede, Crystal Castles, Star Wars, Pole Position, Tempest. The list goes on and on. Even Dig Dug, okay. These all had one little problem that popped up over and over again. See this resistor here, how it's burnt all to hell, and it's actually burnt the board under it. See that? That's R29. See it? That's been replaced. That's a newer one, and it's still burnt the board up. Okay? And then you have down here R30, which sometimes you have the same problem with. In certain games, that one will burn up. In certain games, that one will burn up. just depends on what's going on. Okay? So, we're going to talk about the sense circuit and open the gates of hell. Everybody argues about this. So, I'm just going to say right up front, people. Everybody listen to me. If you don't like the sense uh, mod, I don't have any problems with that. If you do like the sense mod, I don't have any problems with that either. Somebody said uh, the other day, sorry, I can't remember your name, but somebody said in the comments that this should be called the senseless mod. And I agree. Let's call it the senseless mod. That's pretty cool. But So we're going to mod this damn power supply. And some people are completely for this and some people are completely against this. I'm going to mod this particular one. Maybe not every one I do, but I'm going to mod this one and I'm going to tell you why too. Keep in mind, this is not my machine. I'm doing this for our buddy Adam down at the beach. So I'm going to mod this thing on purpose for a specific reason. First, The first reason is notice that there has already been a problem. So this damn resistor has already burned up once, and now it's burning up again. I don't know if you can see it, but the, the resistor is blackened again. Yeah, there you go. 
So do you see how the board's burnt? That's because that's because the board the resistor that was on there before caught on fire. It literally caught on fire, right? So and this happens all the time on these, right? And then this this new resistor, see how it's brown in the middle? The same thing's going on. So why is that happening? Right? So we're gonna talk about it. So the way Atari designed their power supply, this is the schematics for it. It gets 10.3 or 10 point, it's actually 10.6 on this one, but it gets 10.3 or 10.6 volts in on this connection. And then it has ground down here. And one of the things that it does with it is it creates the five volts on that power supply that we're looking at right now. And then they had this, what they called their sense circuit, right? And it's a real simple little thing. They used a LM305 with, with different legs on it so that it can be controlled externally. Like the, the output of it can be controlled externally. And so it's got this pot right here. That's what I adjusted earlier to turn up the voltage. So I turned it up to 5.1. You saw that, right? So you do that by manipulating this pin and, and blah, 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 and whatever. It makes this increase the voltage up over 5 volts. And you can crank that sucker up to like 6, 6.5, maybe more. Okay. And remember I said that it was because there's resistance on the lines, so I like having a little bit high because it's going to lose a little voltage. Blah, 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 right? So here's how Atari designed this circuit. They send out 5 volts on two, two wires to the game board. And they send out a ground which they call the 5 volt return on two wires to the game board. And they're they're thicker wires, right? Well, those wires being thick, they have a little resistance in them, and then the connections all have resistance in them. So that goes that leaves at 5 volts. But really, once it gets through the connector and onto the wire, it's at 4.98 volts or something like that. And then once it gets through the connector on the edge of the board, it's at 4.96 volts. So now that it's on the board, it's not 5 volts anymore. It's 4.96 volts. It lost a little bit of power because there's resistance in all the connectors. Okay? And then the tin on the edge connector tarnishes over time. So let me show you that real quick. So here is the edge connector. This one's not that bad, but you can see that it it tarnishes and you can see that somebody has cleaned it up and gotten some of the uh, the very edge of the thing down to the, just the bare copper but there's a problem with this you know and we're talking about over the course of 40 years that's quite a while right but it'll really do it within a year you know so this gets oxidized and tarnished and just dirty okay so that's an issue and then keep in mind too that the pins inside the connector that have all been replaced, they do the same thing, or they lose their tension to where they just barely touch this metal. Okay, so let's say the pin is just barely touching that big fat ground trace there. So A is a ground trace, right? So let's say that the pin is just barely touching that. Well, does 5 volts get through that, or does our 4.96 get through that? No, now maybe only 4.8 is getting through it. Because there's resistance, you know, anywhere there's resistance, you lose a little voltage and you add heat, like it, it creates heat. <laughs> That's what resistors do, right? So you start getting heat on these pads. Well, what happens then? It creates more resistance. So now instead of 4.8 volts, you're getting 4.5 volts on the damn board. So the power supply is making 5 volts and the edge connector is only getting 4.5 volts, right? It's losing power on the connections. Okay, so let's go back and look at the schematics. Okay, so Atari added these two lines right here coming out of the power supply, and this was the one that was broke. And it's just a, uh, it's a thinner line, so it's not as thick as the ones that they're using for the power. So the, the power supply sends out the power, and then we've already explained 5 volts doesn't get to the board, so maybe 4.96 gets to the, volt, to the board or whatever. Well, the sense lines are thinner, so they don't have hardly any resistance, and the power is not going through uh, the sense lines to power the actual PCB. So they literally sense what the actual voltage is on the power board. They're blowing me up on the phone tonight. 
So they, they actually sense what the power is on the power board and then they sneakily send a little message back to the, to the voltage regulator and they say, hey, guess what I heard? There ain't no damn five volts on the main board. It's only 4.96. And so the, the voltage regulator is a very smart one, right? It's got all these extra lines, and it says, well, I can fix that. I'll just turn it up a little bit. So it turns up the voltage itself, right? It makes it 5.04, and then over on the board, it gets 5 volts. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly 5, but it's just, you know what I mean. You, you people that are engineers know exactly how it's working. But basically, if the voltage is low over there, is lower over there than it is here, it turns up the voltage regulator. Right, I guess well, it must not work that way, but it sends the signal back so that the voltage regulator knows that it's low and raises it. And of course, all that's done with resistors and stuff. So, why do the resistors burn up? The one that caught on fire twice. Okay, so here's the one that catched that caught on fire R29, and then there's also one down here R30. So look where they're at. R30 connects. Uh, from this is ground connects from ground to the negative sense. So why does why is it even there? It's so that whenever you don't have a load, like say you don't have the board plugged in, this negative sense line, the ground. Uh, let's do the power one. It makes more sense. the The power sense line. If this if that resistor was not there, then this sense line would be would be telling the Voltage regulator, holy hell, over on the board there's zero volts. And the voltage regulator say, okay, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. And it would turn it up as high as it could go, which might be six and a half volts, right? But you don't want that. So you want the sense line to kind of, they are blowing me the hell up on this phone. You want the sense line to kind of tell the, the voltage regulator what's going on here, right? So they have this little resistor so that a little trickle of voltage gets through and blah, 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 blah. And so that with nothing plugged in and no load on it, this resistor will give the voltage over to the sense line. Okay, so what, ha what happens in an extreme situation is the five volts doesn't get to the board because that edge connector gets so burnt up and so toasty and so dirty that only like four volts is getting to the board. Well, then the sense line says, oh hell, you got to send more. And so this cranks up more voltage and sends it out. But it still doesn't get through. So you get in a situation where the the all of the voltage over here, and remember this is connected to the p power on the actual board, the PCB starts drawing so much current that it can't get it through here, so it sucks it backwards through here. And so it starts trying to get its 5 volts through this line and through that resistor. Well, that's a little quarter watt resistor. So once you get a good little bit of current going through here, it catches that resistor on fire. It just literally burns it up. And it's that one. And you, on the ones that I do, it's almost always this one, which is on the ground. So I don't know why that would be. But um, but that's why those burn up, okay? So that's the explanation of why they're burning up. So why are we going to do the sense mod and what is the sense mod? So the sense mod is the senseless mod, like the the viewer was telling us. We're going to get rid of the sense mod. Yeah, that's right. I'm getting rid of it. So why am I going to get rid of it? Well, this is my buddy Adam's game, and he's operating in, in an arcade, and this resistor will not burn up if you keep the edge connector perfectly clean and where the voltage is getting through, just how it's supposed to be. All right? Nobody's dying, so the, the texts aren't that important. And so if you if you keep the edge connector completely clean and everything's cool and the, the pins are connected very well and everything, all of this works as it should, and when the voltage drops just a little bit, it turns it up and all of that. Right? But if you don't keep that connector clean, eventually it burns up this resistor. Well, once it burns up this resistor, our buddy Adam's not he's not gonna be out there soldering in new resistors. This you know. So let's say it burns it up and then you put a new one in. As soon as you plug it back in, it's going to burn it up again because you didn't clean the edge connector. <laughs> right? Because the edge connector is the real problem. So here's what I'm doing. I'm getting rid of that sense thing. So then what's going to happen? Well, it's going to send 5 volts out. 
And if the edge connector is not clean, the voltage is going to drop on the board to like four and a half or whatever. And then the game's going to stop working. So Adam's going to look over and see that the game's not working and go try to figure out why the game is not working. And so the problem is going to be the same either way. The problem is the edge connector. The edge connector is dirty or needs cleaned or whatever, right? But by getting rid of this sense mod, I'm, all I'm really doing is getting rid of the, abil of the, the problem where the resistor burns up. Right? So we're, go we're going to give him a way where he doesn't have to worry about replacing the resistor. So how do you do that? You just put a short across it. So we're going we're gonna to short this pin to this pin is how I do it. Some people put a, a jumper across the resistor. So basically, instead of this being a sense line, we're going to turn it into another 5-volt line by just connecting from here to here. I do it at the connector, but either way works. Okay, that's going to disable the sense circuit because the the uh, regulator is going to be told then, so if it puts out 5 volts, it's going to be told that it's the board is giving it 5 volts. And it's just going to disable the sense circuit. So a lot of people don't like doing that because they say, oh, well, it's a great design, you should leave it like that, and the problem is really the edge connector. This is not the problem. The problem is not really the sense circuit. It's the edge connector. Yeah, it's the edge connector, but you're, you're, you're making it burn up resistors. Now, really, if it burns up the resistor, it's not the end of the freaking world, but it's literally burning the board. So, and if, it, if you do this, it doesn't make, really make the game run any better. It just makes it where the game stops working whenever the edge connector gets dirty. And the only way you're going to get it working again is if you go clean the edge connector, right? So it's half and one, and, and it's six and one and half a dozen and the other. So some people are really for it. Some people are really against it. This board has already had resistors burning up. Obviously, there's been problems with the edge connector. They replaced all the pins. I'm going to jump her over both of these resistors and get rid of that circuit and then if the game starts acting up Adam can go over there and, and measure the voltage on the board and you can turn up the voltage here so that you get the proper voltage to the board you just have to do it manually it doesn't try to do it uh, by itself but we're removing this little quarter watt resistor that's so easy to burn up okay so that's how you do it Sim simple as that this is the negative sense uh, test point and so that is the negative sense line you just jump right over to the, the ground plane. And then this is the positive sense test point. So that is the positive sense line. And this is the 5 volt line. And you just jump the two together. So think about what's happening now. The 5 volts is coming out. And it's going out on its regular two pins. But it's also going over on the sense line. So you're getting a little bit more uh, capacity to send current to the board, right? And then the same with the ground. You've got your two ground pins that are still going out, but you're also sending the ground out on the negative sense. So you're kind of reversing the flow of it, basically. Instead of it sending stories back to here, what this is getting is it's connected to, the, to its own ground that it's using, right? So it's not going off the board to get its, its, its uh, sense. Basically, you're just shorting it out to where it's just it's feeding itself back in and as simple as that and again if you don't like this and you hate doing this and you're never going to do it to yours i agree with you all right so we're going to pop this back in the game and uh guess what it's time to test it so here is the main pcb set this has been sent out and repaired probably several times but this is Eldorado Games has repaired it and then we've also got this sticker up here way back in February of last year now Adam I haven't had this thing this long I mean come on can't blame me for that I've had it a while but I haven't had it that long <laughs> um, so this has been looked over by several people it appears Adam has no problem sending things out to get repaired. <laughs> if, if the board needs repaired, he will send that sucker out and get it fixed. Okay, now remember how we were looking on the power supply and it uh, said that there was a 15 volt, a negative 15 volt that the power supply created, but yet uh, it wasn't on there? That's because on this board, like on uh, the Star Wars that we were looking at, it does it on the actual board. So you've got these two 
transistors here, I believe, make the lights blink. I think that's the player one and player two blinky lights. If I was going to guess, that's what I think. And then you have these transistors down here, okay, that create, or I believe they create, a negative 15 and a positive 5 for the DAC. That, and I, I believe that is a different uh, supply than the one that feeds everything else on the board. Um, and then somewhere there is a positive 15 as well. Where is it at? There it is. Positive 15. So that's something we can check. Without those voltages, uh, your deflection won't work. The board won't output. Um, so it, it takes the 22 off the board and turns it into 15. Um, that one is a 7915, and I can't read the other one, but... So that's what's going on. So this is the main board. And then on the other side, we have the uh, the famous math box, they call it. So this little board here, the Tempest Auxiliary Board. See how down here they've called it the math on their sticker? Um, this is very similar to like a Battle Zone board set. Which is black and white, though. Um, but yeah, that's how it was originally designed. And so these are pokies. The famous Atari pokey. And these, I can't remember the deal with these. But it's the same thing that's on a. Uh, I believe it's the same chip that's on Battlezone. I believe. I may be wrong about that. Okay, so we're going to slide it in, plug it up, and then turn it on and see if we can hear the game playing. We won't be able to see it because of the monitor, but maybe we can hear it playing. Um, they call it playing blind. Okay, I plugged it in, turned it on. The 5 volt light came on on the board, which is what you want. I checked it with the multimeter. It was at 4.8. I checked on the power supply, and it was at 4.9. So remember, I had it set at 5.1, but now that it has a load, it's dropped. And the power supply is a little bit higher than the board because of resistance on the connections and the lines and all that. Um, so I turned up the board to where we are now sitting pretty at 5 volts on the board, but I haven't tried to... I haven't heard a peep yet. I don't know if it's actually doing anything. Oh, snap. So it might be really loud, I don't know. doesn't work but it does appear to be playing blind so I must be spinning around the <laughs> Adam you've got it set on too easy buddy I've already beat two boards without even being able to see it So it appears to be up and playing, but the poor monitor is not. So on our next video, we will have to tackle the poor monitor. All right, folks, so that wraps up this video. So what have we done? We've tested everything. We didn't find much wrong, which Adam already knew. But now I know everything's cool, right? We've confirmed everything's how it's supposed to be. Everything's sweet. We fixed a couple little minor things that weren't that big of a deal. It would have kept working without that. For instance, if that sense uh, wire was disconnected, well, we did the sense mod anyway. It wouldn't have mattered, right? 
so uh, everything's cool and that we're now up to the monitor so next time we will be working on the mighty Wells Garner 6100 Wells Gardner <laughs> 6100 uh, color vector monitor just like the one that we messed with in the Star Wars um, so join us for that now we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links thank you thank you thank you whenever you do that it sends you to Amazon if you're going to buy something there anyway if you click our link first it gives us a royalty thank you to everybody that's been doing that they now work uh, in several countries internationally there's a different link for different countries so thank you for everybody that's been doing that make sure to check out my brother Donnie's channel it's called My Brother Donnie. We do a lot of stuff over there, too, that's really fun. He's at the Grand Canyon right now. That's pretty crazy. So he's filming stuff while he's out there, but it has nothing to do with arcade games. But he, he's always getting into some kind of adventure, and uh, people seem to enjoy it. So I'm over there on his channel a lot. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you, and uh, leave your comments down below. What do you think? Did we get anything accomplished today? I think we did. We've got it playing blind, and we know that everything that we're looking at right now works fine. The board may not be outputting video. We don't know that yet, but uh, it probably is because he sent it off and had it checked by, by some people. So, um, yeah, so there we go. Oh, and I want to show you one last thing before we leave. Look at this. Look, look at this. It's, it's red. It's white. It's yellow. It's green. Then it turns into a blue and then purple, and then it's back to red and white again. I kind of like it.